Now let's talk about the topic of ring width. That's the size of the growth rings. Growth rate, which implies something about how fast the tree is growing. How those relate to density. And how that relates to strength. So it's a commonly repeated fact that if you have wide ring widths, that implies that the tree is growing fast, that the wood is low density, and it has low strength. Unfortunately, this is a problematic misconception that stops us using wood efficiently. So let's have a look at that. So as a tree is growing, it's producing rings. And generally speaking, the bigger the tree gets, the narrower the rings become. So here on the outside of the tree, we have small rings. And in the middle of the tree, we have big rings. But here, the diameter of the ring is small. So here, the tree is actually going, growing slower than it is here, because this is a big diameter ring, and the tree has got taller. So this, this uh, small width ring represents actually quite a lot of new growth. So the, if we were to plot uh, position radially and divide it up by the rings, which gets smaller and smaller as the tree gets bigger and older, and plot the volume increase, we would find that actually the rate of growth is small at the beginning and gets larger as the tree gets older. And eventually it starts to even out as it gets to be a really old tree. So that's why ring width and the growth rate of the tree are not well connected. So if we have a piece of wood with small rings compared to a piece of wood with large rings, it might simply be that this piece of wood came from the outer part of the log compared to this one. And at this point, the tree might actually have been growing faster than it was when it grew this part of the, of the wood. Now, why do people say that a wide growth ring means lower density wood? Well, that's partly because it's sort of true in some species. So in a species where your growth ring has the two parts, the early wood and the late wood. And there is kind of a gradual transition from the early wood into the late wood, like uh, spruces and firs. Uh, typically, in the growth of these trees, the width of the late wood part is fixed. And if you have a wider ring, it just has more of the early wood and a fixed part of the late wood. So the wider the ring, proportionally less of the denser late wood part it has. So on a small scale, you do then have usually higher density for smaller rings. But for a large piece of wood, often you will have a mixture of growth ring widths within it. And so a simple measure of uh, growth ring width isn't really describing how much relative late wood and early wood you have. So that's why it doesn't really work, even for the species that it's supposed to work with. If you have a species that has no uh, visible growth rings, a softwood species with no visible growth rings, which is quite common, actually, um, you would expect no variation in uh, density compared to ring width, even if you could work out where the rings were. If you have a species that has an abrupt change from early wood to late wood, it's quite stripy like uh, larch, for example, um, then again, there is no correlation expected between the ring width and the density. And that's because uh, for these trees, the uh, thickness of the late wood part is not fixed like it is for the species that are growing late wood with this gradual transition. Uh, the other thing that can happen, even with these species like spruce and fir that have that expectation of link between ring width and growth rate, 
is that if you have trees that are growing in a really cold environment, so they're up a mountain, actually they might not have much uh, late wood at all uh, because the later part of the growing season is quite suppressed. So you might actually end up with a position where if you have really, really small growth rings, uh, the wood is not dense at all. For hardwoods, um, different story. In fact, uh, a little bit in the opposite. So in the particular case of ring porous hardwoods, where you have the pores or vessels in uh, a certain place within the growth ring, this is the direction of the growth, um, then you would expect to have actually uh, higher density the smaller the ring, because the smaller the ring, the less of it is taken up by the vessels. I said smaller ring by mistake, I meant larger ring. So for hardwoods like oak and ash, actually the expectation is that the faster you can make the tree grow, the denser the wood will be that results. That's not to say that ring width isn't useful and actually doesn't correlate with density in other ways. So as I said earlier, if you have small growth rings, that's a sign that it might come from the outside of the log. And in a softwood, usually the older it gets, the better the properties of the wood from our point of view become. So a sign that it's coming from the outer part of the log where you've got mature wood, that's uh, telling you that probably the timber is denser and stiffer and stronger than if it was coming from the juvenile wood in the middle. So if you have small growth rings, it's an indication that it's coming from the outside of the log, which is an indication that it has better wood properties. So actually it's not ring width directly, and not growth rate of the tree, which is helping you determine uh, something useful about the mechanical properties. It's that ring width is telling you something about radial position. So strength and density. One reason that you might see a link between strength, density, and ring width is because of the radial trend in wood properties that you see in softwoods. So if you have a piece with narrow rings, that's an indication that it might be coming from the outer part of the log. And in most softwoods, the, as the tree gets older, it grows stronger, stiffer, and denser wood. If you have wide rings, that's an indication that it might be coming from the middle. Rings might also be an indication of growth conditions, like origin of, of the timber, which might also affect the, the properties. So um, why does uh, softwood have this radial trend in wood properties? Uh, there's a theory that it's to do with the changing biomechanical needs of the tree. So when a tree is young, it's relatively small, and its strategy for shedding wind load and snow load is simply to move out of the way. So it likes to have nice flexible wood because that flexibility allows it to sway and let the snow fall off or the wind blow to the side. As the tree gets older, it can't do that because it's now a big, heavy, tall tree. If it sways too much, it will fall over. So it needs to be stiffer in order that it can stay standing up. And because it's stiffer, it also then needs to be stronger. So because the biomechanical needs of the tree change, it will change the character of the wood that it's growing at that point to match its particular needs. And it's doing that through clever things to do with the cell microstructure, things like microfiber angle, is how the tree is adjusting its mechanical properties. Um, that's the theory anyway. Um, you see these radial trends in, uh, in properties uh, from pith to bark if you do averages of many trees. If you just look at one tree, you'll see all sorts of random stuff going on in there. Um, but if you average many, many trees of a certain species, you will tend to see that the density will increase to a certain point, and the stiffness will follow some kind of similar thing, and so will strength. In some species, you have quite a dense inner core, like Sitka spruce has quite a dense inner core. So it's not necessarily that it will follow a, a simple pattern. It depends on the species. But generally speaking, you have lower properties for the first, say, 15, 20 years worth of growth of the tree. It depends on the growth conditions and the spacing of the trees and exactly how they're growing with respect to each other. Um, but in the 
timber business, uh, usually this is called juvenile wood um, because it's describing the first uh, juvenile years of the tree's growth. But basically the key thing is to know that there is some general trend in wood properties from pith to bark in softwoods that generally makes the wood better from, uh, as it gets older.